So, folks, uh, if you've watched at all the stock market, uh, you've heard of this term. It's called IPO, and that's initial public offering. And I was just talking the other day to somebody in the money world about this, and it's funny, IPOs 20 years ago, everybody wanted to get in one because it was the forbidden fruit. And if you had the right relationships, you could get into a company right when it was coming out as far as trading the stock. And many people made a whole lot of money. And But unfortunately, many people in the history of IPOs have lost money as well. So there's no guarantees when we talk about IPOs. And Facebook is a good example of this. When it IPO'd a couple of years ago, it went rocketing up to almost $50. And a lot of people, that was the only price they could get it right at the beginning is $50 a share. It came out, I think it listed for 17 or 18 and then it ended up going all the way up to 50 So if you got in early or if you were one of the people that was inside the, the wealth circle, we call it, the friendly circle of getting in before everyone else, you made some money. But a lot of people bought at 50 and then Facebook went down into the teens and then has made a U-turn and gone back up again. So it's not about what you get. It's when you get it a lot. And we've got a company called Alibaba that's coming out. They're going to be IPOing here uh, very shortly. And they are anticipating $20 billion in their IPO. And this year in general, 2014, is on track to be an $80 billion year for IPOs. That's a fascinating number. And we've got a guest joining us from Atlantic City, New Jersey area. His name is Ken Wisniewski. And... It's going to talk about these IPOs and, and what's going on. Ken, welcome in. Thank you very much, Pete. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, now I've, I've read that you agree with me, I think, on, on this part here where IPOs are good in the short term, bad in the long term. Explain that concept to the folks out there, and maybe if I didn't do a good job explaining what IPOs are, introduce IPO concept to the, to the listener. Yeah, no, I think you did a great job kind of explaining the IPOs. I think IPO has become a real buzzword out there. Uh, over the past probably decade or so, just related to uh, new stocks that are coming out that kind of maybe are seen as being undervalued and having really high ceilings to really grow. And I think, uh, you know, that that started you know, going back uh, several years ago with Google and then obviously trended over into Facebook. So when we hear about IPOs now, I think there's a lot of hype around them and people kind of view it as the opportunity to get in on the quote-unquote ground floor and watch it really explode from that point. You know, when you think about ground floor, uh, it's a relative term because some of the people on the inside are in a lot cheaper, so to speak, than people that are in at the IPO price, aren't they? 100%. Uh, people that have had the opportunity to get involved in kind of the pre-public offerings have, you know, really nice levels of stock that they might have bought at varying different times and in turn, you know, have it at a much lower lower rate. So when these IPOs occur, a lot of times what you'll see is uh, – you know, some of them kind of gaining some sort of liquidation, you know, where they're selling some level of their stock and obviously seeing a, a nice appreciated value on top of what they, quote unquote, were into it for. Now, Alibaba is an interesting concept. It sounds like, uh, you know, it sounds like you go there to buy the flying carpets and stuff like that. It sounds like something from, <laughs> it's like a Mideast kind of sound, but it's a China company and it is a buying place, I guess. I mean, how would you describe Alibaba? It's basically what Amazon is here in uh, you know the United States, but the difference between Alibaba and Amazon is also it also connects you to a lot of other portals that sell products. So um, Amazon, you know, all kind of sells as products that are somewhat connected to Amazon. In this particular case, it also sells products that are outside of the Alibaba kind of domain, if you will. So they also make a lot of revenue through kind of referral. So the, the interesting thing is it kind of combines what Amazon does and in some ways what Google does. And obviously it's been extremely profitable in the China market, and they're obviously looking to take that and try to transport it over here into the U.S. market. And, that, and that's a fascinating thing because it remains an interesting IPO here in America, yet most all of its revenues are coming from China, correct? Yes, and I think that um, – the reason they're looking at doing the IPO goes back to kind of the onset of our discussion, which was really the hype that really surrounds it. By doing the IPO here in America, it gives it relevance here in America and it enables it to probably be able to kind of launch with some level of relevance into the United States sector and obviously take advantage of our very large population of uh, e-commerce buyers. So I think the IPO in this particular case is one that really – uh, plays on hype, but also plays on an opportunity for kind of uh, almost media promotion in the fact that it provides a lot of credence to the, the company 
you know, just as it's even beginning to launch here in the United States. And folks, if just joining us, we're talking to Ken Wisniewski, and you may have seen him on MSNBC, Bloomberg TV, Fox News, and Fox Business, discussing internet marketing, social media, and such things as tech. And his insights here, well, we're talking about the IPO market. And Ken, I really think this is starting to remind me of the Y2K years. You remember they were just launching out. Anything with a dot-com was going up like crazy because when we're talking about Alibaba and just what's the fascination and the the magnitude of this wave coming in with this IPO, this could be the largest IPO in history, couldn't it? Yeah, you know, the one difference, I guess, uh, that we look at there is that they've got really tremendous revenues already, Alibaba. Yep. You know, the, the, the question is, you know, when you look at kind of some of these other IPOs that maybe fit somewhat on the peripheral, you know, companies, uh, you know, uh, Snapchat is a, a company that's been talked about a lot. They don't really have any revenue at all. <laughs> you know, they're, they're working at an operating loss. Uh, so they're based all on kind of hype and, you know, expectation. When Alibaba's case, I mean, the only thing I could say about them that would be concerning is, you know, how do they peak? You know, is this kind of their highest valuation? And then are they really not going to have the opportunity to kind of see that growth? Um, you know, people could take the counter stance that, you know, there's even if they can't defeat Google or, or the uh, the Amazon marketplace here in the United States and they're a second player in that space, even if they have 20 or 30 percent of the market share, that's a tremendous amount of revenue. And obviously they could could still be a very good bargain, you know, even at their IPO price. Now, when we talk about there was a uh, Fantasy Island back in the day, and they had the uh, tattoo his name was, and he would always look up and say, yeah. boss, the plane, right, the plane. And so let's talk about uh, in the IPO market, let's pretend your tattoo, and you're talking about uh, Coach Pete, the play. How, how can people play this stock IPO to make the most money in this IPO period for Alibaba and maybe other ones? What's a good play? The interesting thing with Alibaba is that there's also a very unique play that you could do that uh, is one that I haven't really seen very often, and it's the fact that Yahoo a few years back had made a very large investment uh, during that kind of uh, friends and family period that you talk about, Pete, uh, where they were able to kind of make that investment in Alibaba, and now as Alibaba is going public, uh, Yahoo is going to actually sell about 25% of their uh, equity or, or their shares that they control, which is about a bottom line, uh, you know, after taxes and everything, about a $12 billion um, bounce to Yahoo. So one of the things that I found interesting uh, is that, you know, potentially you would have the opportunity uh, to be able to get in on the IPO and, still have the Yahoo stock if you were to kind of purchase Yahoo stocks. Yahoo stocks have kind of skyrocketed here recently, not based upon anything that Yahoo's doing, but really based upon what what they've done with their investments. So it's an interesting play and a different type of play, and one that maybe uh, ultimately provides you a bit more security if you were going to go and felt strong about Alibaba, but were concerned about that quick rise and maybe a settling. Yahoo provides you with that opportunity to get engaged with a little bit of that, but at the same time still see the benefit and the security of maybe having a, another kind of company that's been in the marketplace for some time, you know, contributing towards the, that stock as well. So that's a good indirect play, and I, you know, I, I was wondering why. And I just checked uh, Yahoo's price; it's it's been going up like crazy here in the last couple of years, yep. and it's probably because of that uh, fascination and uh, and basically the mystery of, of what Alibaba is going to do. Because Yahoo still exists, so obviously, but uh, we saw the same thing when Twitter came out. There were some companies that had invested in Twitter, and they rocketed up before the IPO, but then came down afterwards. So would be investing in Yahoo now be almost like the wrong time to get in, like you want to buy the rumor, sell the news kind of thing, and, and basically the, the price of Yahoo is Alibaba already baked into that price. Yeah, it is a little bit now. Uh, you know, the time would have been a little a little while ago when this kind of wasn't as prominent and, you know, people weren't kind of paying so close attention to it. The only reason that I could see that being a, a realistic play would be the fact, uh, and it's kind of a unique scenario, where if Yahoo kind of goes and takes this $12 billion uh, kind of asset that they're going to have left with after they sell this, and turns around and can make another very strong investment in another company, you know, or even purchase a company, uh, that could be an interesting way for, uh, you know, you to be able to get engaged with some of these other companies that are kind of up and coming. And keeping in mind that Yahoo still owns 
uh, a very large amount of stock in Alibaba. Right. Seventy-five uh, percent more of it they're still going to have, uh, as opposed to selling their whole position. So uh, to me, I kind of feel it's it might be the safer play. And uh, again, I guess I can make a more definitive notation on that if I knew kind of what Yahoo was going to do with that with that twelve million dollars. If they were going to utilize that to. Uh, to a great degree, Yahoo could suddenly become a very intriguing play, not necessarily because of what they're doing from their search perspective, but what they're really doing from their investment perspective. Yeah, and and people need to be very careful there, here because a lot of people get burnt. They they fall for what I call the excitable hype, and you know, everyone gets excited. Yep. It spikes up. You're buying into the spike because it's never going to be any cheaper than today, and this can last a day or two or a month or two, but eventually, and again, we Facebook came out with a bunch of hype too, but eventually it came back down. And the buying opportunity was a lot better later, not right then. If you're not in, you know, again, if you're not in at a very cheap price, not one of the insiders, sometimes it's better to wait not only for Alibaba, but also for Yahoo. See what happens there. Uh, One final point. Alibaba is not a site where they are selling merchandise. They are a collection of sites. So to me, they, they are almost like eBay and Amazon together instead of just buying Amazon. And Amazon makes a lot more money because they control all their profits and they are the site. But explain your opinion on Alibaba as a shopping network, I guess. People go into the – it's like a flea market, I guess, and they go in there and it's all different shops, right? Yeah, it's true. They, they do they do have some aspect of it is their own kind of product that's similar to Amazon, but they do make a lot of money with that kind of that shopping kind of network, if you will, which is more almost, if you think about it, like a, like a Google you know, people, you know, have their listings and, you know, through their uh, paid search. And in turn, you know, people come through that marketplace and make those purchases. So they've kind of combined e-commerce from that perspective. But, uh, you know, my feeling is that um, ultimately, you know, Amazon really does control the market share here in the United States. Um, I think they're only kind of growing in kind of popularity and kind of, you know, with some of the creative things that they're looking to do. I feel that they continue to be at the forefront of probably innovation related to delivery and whatnot. So it's going to be tough for Alibaba to come in and really, you know, move them off their perch. But, uh, you know, people are also cost conscious. If, if Alibaba can find a way to leverage costs at a better price and things people can buy on Amazon, you know, let's be honest. You know, uh, brand uh, favoritism doesn't necessarily and brand loyalty doesn't mean that much if you've got to pay more money people you know nowadays have the opportunity to to buy the same thing somewhere else at a lower price with the click of a mouse so you know that's going to be the the area that i think will make the most interest and intrigue is if they're able to you know be able to compete at a lower price well it's it's, it is fascinating and 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 it really is something that people need to i guess spend some time researching and watching it'll be it'll be a fun thing to watch and uh, ken i want to have you back on the future to talk about what happened after it came out Perfect. I love the opportunity. I appreciate the chance today to talk about it. Fascinating. All right, so I want to have you on after after this IPO settles down a little bit. We'll talk about it. How's that? Perfect. I appreciate it. Thanks again. Thanks for your time today, Ken. Folks, we'll be right back after this. <laughs> 